Hi guys, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with a mystery book recommendations video. I did put a call out on Twitter where it was just a, you know, if I decide to do a recommendation series, what sort of books would you like me to recommend? And Beck asked if I read many mystery books. The answer is both yes and no, I think, because a lot of books have mystery elements in them and I often tend to classify them either in thrillers or in crime rather than just straight up mystery. So while I've got a massive pile of books here that I'm going to recommend from my reading last year and from 2018 I think, I don't think any of all of them are straight up mystery books but they are books that have mystery elements in them. I think sometimes if you're starting to get into a new genre that can be quite helpful because there are definitely fantasy books that have mystery elements and there are definitely science fiction books that have mystery elements and I think sometimes that can help particularly if those are genres that you really like. We're going to do some mystery recommendations. If there are other book recommendation videos that you would like to see please leave them in the comments down below or let me know over on Twitter because I would like to do this a little bit more regularly. I've quite literally just pulled a bunch of stuff off my shelves of things that I've read that I thought had quite a good mystery element to them. I think the standard definition of a mystery is that you have something that's happened and a central character who is a detective or an amateur detective trying to find out what is going on. And while I've sort of played with that loosely in my recommendations, that is basically the, the sort of the general idea. I'm going to talk about some middle grades, some young adult and then some adult books as well. I was really tempted to put the Lockwood & Co series back in here because I think there is a central mystery element through the entire series and we have one main character Lucy who is trying to figure out what is going on but I think that's still more paranormal adventure than it is straight up mystery although there is a mystery element to it. The one middle grade that I'm going to talk about really briefly is York by Laura Ruby. This is more of an adventure sort of story but the main character's stumble over some clues that were left by the people who built this city of York and it's sort of like an alternate New York. They left behind these clues in the buildings that they constructed and the group begin to investigate to try and uncover sort of this it's supposed to I think it's supposed to be like a treasure. They race all over town and there's a whole lot of other people involved but then they have to sort of solve a whole lot of puzzles so this has a mystery element to it but perhaps not your standard mystery where someone's been murdered and whatnot. But it was still a really engaging and entertaining middle grade read. If we're talking about young adult mystery books, the Every Series by Ellie Marnie is probably top of the list because this is sort of like a Sherlock Holmes retelling but with teenagers set in Melbourne and it is an amazing series that I absolutely adore. I must do a reread of this this year. There is a companion book no Limits which takes place after the last book Every Move which this is more new adult and this definitely has a mystery element to it. This one is set in Country Vic which is really cool. Another go-to Love Osway author is Fleur Ferris. She was a former police officer among other things and she has four books currently out. Her first book Risk was about a girl who meets up with someone she's met online and then disappears. Obviously very topical. My favourite was Black which is sort of set in a small town where there's a whole lot of secrets and lies and things in this town that cause a lot of problems and there's some slightly creepy elements to this one which is why I liked it so much. Wreck is about a girl who unintentionally stumbles across a message that puts her life in danger. And this one sort of goes backwards and forwards in time a little bit. And then Found is her most recent book. And this has to do with a young girl who, or a young teen girl who finds out that her family has secrets and those secrets put her family at risk. And this was, this was probably not my favorite of Fleur's books, but it was d still a book that I really enjoyed. Small Spaces is more psychological thriller-esque, but definitely has a mystery element in it. As the main character Tash is dealing with a lot of trauma from her childhood, but she doesn't quite know why and she needs to figure that out. This is really dark and creepy. I don't recommend reading this one at nighttime. All That Impossible Space I, by Anna Morgan I read earlier in the year and it's about Lara who's in year 10 and in one of her classes they are looking at old unsolved mysteries. She spends a lot of time looking at the Somerton Man which is a true story and and then the teacher who gave her the assignment goes missing and so we sort of get two mysteries going at the same time as Lara tries to figure out exactly what's going on. Oh and I was going to also include Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schultz because this is a young adult fantasy sci-fi book 
but it does have a strong mystery element through it. As the main character Kerrily discovers a plot to kill the four queens of her kingdom and so she is racing against time to try and stop that crime from happening and trying to uncover how it's going to happen because she sort of knows who's behind it but she doesn't know how it's going to happen. So this has a strong mystery element through it too. If we're talking about adult mysteries you have the Gemma Woodstock series by, Sem uh, by Sarah Bailey, who is an Australian author. The first book is The Dark Lake, then you have Into the Night, and then the third book is Where the Dead Go. This all follows a female detective who is struggling with her own personal demons and solving crimes at the same time. The first book, The Dark Lake, is set in her hometown. The second book, Into the Night, is set in Melbourne, and then Where the Dead Go is set when she has to take custody of her son and also deal with a crime in a small town. I really like these stories because Gemma is quite a flawed character but she is also likeable because she's flawed. She's a very human character and the mysteries are great and I think Where the Dead Go is actually my favourite of the three books. The next series I want to talk about is Michael Connolly's Renee Ballard series. I have also read his Bosch series or part of his Bosch series but the Renee Ballard series is one that I really enjoy probably because it has a female lead character. The first Renee book which is the only book so far that I think is her story only is The Late Show and then the, follow, the following two books have her teaming up with Bosch as well which is great because I actually quite like the interplay that the two characters have. So you have Dark Sacred Night and The Night Fire which is the most recent one. The two team up to solve cold cases but they also have their own current cases that they're working on as well. I wasn't sure when I first started re reading Michael Connolly whether I would like his writing style, but actually it turns out I really do. It's very, very easy to fall into the flow of his writing. You have The Hangman books by Jack Heath. These are sort of more contemporary crime mystery stories. Timothy Blake is the main character. He works for the FBI and he is a cannibal. It's kind of creepy and at times very gross but there are mysteries that Timothy gets involved in and starts to help solve because he likes solving puzzles and I think that element of the story is really engaging. Then you have Jane Harper. Jane Harper is the author of the Aaron Falk series, The Dry and Force of Nature. Aaron Falk is an Australian federal police officer, detective, detective perhaps, and he basically works in fraud but he, in both these books, he finds himself caught up in two different cases. In the first one he is asked to investigate the death of a former friend in his hometown. It appears that his friend has committed murder-suicide with his family, however his family don't believe that that's the case and so he, as, as a favour to his friend's family, he starts looking into it and then uncovers that something else is going on in the town and Force of Nature he is investigating a fraud case. Some of the people involved in that case go missing while on a team building exercise in the forest and forest or woods or something like that. And so suddenly he finds himself investigating that as well. I fell in love with Jane Harper's writing this year. She writes place like no one else, especially Australia. I can't wait to read The Lost Man. I apologise if the cam camera angle changed because I had to get a book out from behind the camera. Uh, if you like more speculative fiction slash mysteries, the Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Taunton. I know this has mixed reviews from some people but I really loved this book. I've read it twice and I've enjoyed it both times. It is about a man who every day wakes up in the body of somebody else and lives that day through that person's perspective while trying to find out why Evelyn Hardcastle died and it is fantastic and fun. It's one of those books that I still think about and it's been two years since I first read it. If you're into more science fiction type things. One Way by S.J. Morden. I think this is the first book in a series. I've only read the first book. This was a book where eight astronauts were sent to Mars. All of the people who were sent there were convicted criminals and they were sent there because basically it was a one-way trip and if anything happened to them no one would worry. They were all serving I think life sentences or something like that. It was seen to be economically viable to do that. However when they get there someone starts killing off the other people on the mission and they're stuck on Mars. So this was kind of creepy because you're stuck somewhere and there's only a limited number of people and someone is the killer. And the last book I'm going to mention is a cozy mystery series. It's probably my favourite cozy mystery series. I mean admittedly I don't read that many of them but of the ones that I've read this is my favourite one. It is the Britain Bay series by Jodie Holford. The first book is Deadly News, then Deadly Vows, then Deadly Ride. They are you know cozy mysteries with cute dogs on the cover so I don't know why anyone would have an issue with this book but the main character Molly Owens is a journalist and she has recently moved to the seaside town of Britain Bay. 
to become editor of the local newspaper. She has her reasons for moving to the town in the first book and she settles in really well, everyone's really nice and really friendly, but then suddenly Molly begins to find herself investigating strange murders within the town and it is just fun and all the side characters are really lovely and they pop up in all of the books so it just feels like coming home when you read the next book in the series. These are, pro that's probably my favourite cosy mystery. They were a lot of recommendations. A lot of the books I have talked about at some point in time, possibly in depth or mentioned more than once, but they are books that I have enjoyed with a mystery element. I don't think I read straight up mystery books. There's always some other element in the story, like contemporary mystery or sci-fi mystery or something like that. That's how I choose to read those books, but Hopefully this is a bit of a starting point for those of you who want to dip your toes into mystery books. If you have your own recommendations for mystery books, please feel free to leave them down below. And as I said at the start, if you would like me to recommend books on a particular topic, feel free to leave that down below as well. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.